Hello friend, it's Nick, from somewhere in internet. I make digital art, you can find out more in my IG at Nick Motion. Today I will show you techniques I use to make something like you see on your screen. I will use Cinema 4D R20, I am sure that you are clever enough. To find how to make it without field system, let's get to start. Go and find out how tracking technology works. I will provide basic info for shooting footage. Your shots should have a good contrast between light and dark areas, eyes, nose shadows, eyebrows, mustaches, and small skin details help to get good quality tracking. In order to understand shape depth and world position of scene 3D tracking solver need parallax information, the shift between points or objects located at different depths in space. Apple uses HEVC codec for videos and devices, which may work no good with Adobe or C4D. Convert your footage, I use handbrake. You may have 20 seconds of good tracking out of 60 seconds footage. Your frames per seconds must be consistent. All the way to the end. Check before render. Create motion tracker. Set path to your footage. Change footage resampling to 75%. Go to 2D tracking tab. Set number of track to 500. Create tracking points every 50 frames. Now pick lasso tool. Delete all points that are not on head. Good. Now launch auto track. Great. Go to the 3D Solving tab. Do not change anything here. Press 3D Solve button. Here you go, we got our moving camera. Go to Reconstruction tab. Lower point density. Turn off filter small groups. And press generate point cloud. It take 15 minutes on my machine to get through these process. Now you can create mesh. We need to clean up our mesh for further operations. Pick lasso tool, switch to point mode, and delete unnecessary points. Okay, good. As you see our generate mesh has vertex color tag on it. And when you select it you can see color information. We can use it to color our mesh. Create new material. In texture menu select effect vertex map. Put vertex color tag in it. Press Ctrl plus R or render to picture viewer to check if everything works.
Now let's enhance our material. Copy shader in color channel and insert it in luminance channel. Switch mix mode to multiply, and use it to mix color and luma channels. Go to reflectance channel and delete default specular effect. We don't need it. Add Beckman layer. Go to Fresnel menu and change it to conductor mode. Set roughness and strength on your choice. Add another Beckman layer. Do all the same, but change Fresnel type to dielectric. That's all for shading. Select Mesh, and holding Shift create Displacer Deformer. Go to Shading tab and create Noise. Go to Object tab and crank up the height parameter. Go to fall off and create random field. Then select field, and in field tab change random mode to noise. So we have more. Control over it. Crank up the scale of noise and animation speed. In Filter tab of Viewport, turn off Grid. Go back to Deformer Falloff tab and create Curves effect, to remap Field Strength. Create quantize effect it creates steps in gradients, just like posterize effect. But for fields. Play around with settings. Select Mesh, and holding Shift create Poly FX. Put it under Displacer in Hierarchy. Then select Poly FX, and holding Shift. Create Plane Effector. In Plane Effectors Parameters tab turn off Position, and turn on Scale. Set it to minus 1. We can create additional viewport. For better workflow. Select Plane Effector and create Spherical Field. Adjust Position of Field, Pulse will start from its center. As you see now we have glitches and artifacts in color of our mesh. This is because we forgot to switch our Vertex Color Tag Mode from Points to Polygon. Oh no! Keep in mind! This feature can work differently in other versions of Cinema 4D. Back to our spherical field. Make it bigger, radius of sphere need to cover all mesh. Radius equals length from center of spherical field to the point where geometry ends. 
Go to Remapping tab, change Inner Offset to 0, switch Contour Mode to Curve, and make Curve look like this. Holding Control Create Point in Center. Now define Spline Animation Speed in Frames. I will set it to 25. Means that Curve will make full cycle of offset in 25 frames. Great, we have Pulse now. Select Mesh in Holding Shvid Create Formula Deformer. This will add cool floating movement. Play around with bounding box shape, thus you define animation shape and speed. Keep in mind, after tracking and reconstruction you may have totally different numbers. Because of different scene scale. Now, before we get to using nulls as part of design we need to clean viewport from unnecessary elements. In viewport find filter tab, and turn off, world axis, horizon, grid. Later we will use hardware render, meaning everything you see in viewport will be rendered. Back to work. Duplicate auto features null, for better workflow. You can leave it like that, but you can bring it to a next level. Select Auto Feature Null and holding Alt Create Fracture Object. Select Null, right click and find Delete without Children command. Thus we released all nulls directly in Fracture Object. Select Fracture Object and Create Plane Effector. We will use it for coloring and animation. Turn off position for now. Go to Fall Off tab and create random field. All we need to do with it is change mode from animation to color. These two little icons next to name of the field. You can use one field for both animation and color but I find it more comfortable to work with when I separate them. Now go back to Parameters tab and turn on Position. And create another random field in Animation mode. Rename the fields accordingly so we don't get confused. Now select Plane Effector, go to Parameters tab and crank up numbers really high. So we don't see Nulls End Position no more. Create Quantize Effect. Keep in mind, Effect works on everything below in Hierarchy. Put color random over it. Play around with settings. Create range map effect, use it to define number of nulls we see. 
don't forget to put it under quantize effect. Now, go to field tab and change random mode to noise. Define animation speed and scale of noise. Go back to falloffs and adjust remapping. Wow! Remember to clean up your viewport, turn off visibility of all deformers and effectors in Object Manager. Holding Alt. Click on two grey dots, until they are red. Remain mesh and fracture object as it is. Render. Open Render Settings Set PNG Sequence Turn on Alpha Change Renderer to Hardware Render Go to New Tab and select Following Checkboxes Anti-Aliasing for 2, Super Sampling 2x2 Define file path In output define frame range one more thing. To change look of nulls click on fracture object with middle mouse button, so you select all objects inside and deselect fracture object. Now you can change scale of nulls and it look. Feel free to ask any question. I would love to see what you come up with. Use this hashtag on social media. And tag me. That's all folks. Thank you for watching, hope you learn something new. And remember. Respect the chaos.